Welcome to the first podcast of the year. Most of the matters are financial and geopolitical. Welcome you to it. I trust the year went, uh, the year end celebrations went well. We were in the, on the south coast in Diani and we had an absolutely fantastic time. And I'll tell you about it momentarily. Let me start with some macro thoughts. This is from Tracy Alloway. Returns in 2017, what performed and what didn't. And, uh, it's an interesting chart. Home thoughts, this was a shot of the beach uh, taken at 420 South where we were staying at the New Year. Um, there's a link also for 420 South. I can't recommend it enough. It's in fact just at the beginning of Gallo Beach. It's a beautiful beach. Uh, the cottage was very retro, but retro fitted as it were. Wonderful chefs, fresh seafood being sold to us um, at our doorstep, and uh, really had a tremendous time and reconnected. And it's a great way to. I like these photographs, Africa through the eyes of the world's greatest nature photographer. This is Franz Lanting. I love this photograph of the elephants. I think it is in Gaborone. Um, uh, this one of the Okavango Delta. It was Lanting who first dubbed the Okavango Africa's last Eden. With its seasonal flooding, the delta has become a haven for wildlife. This picture of mist floating on the golden wetlands of northern Botswana draws us in as we search out the detail following the streams that snake across the plain, looking for the creatures that are surely there, hidden in the grass and in the shadows of the trees. In the top left, a distant flooded plain shines in the evening light. The next photograph is of flamingos in Kenya. There can be no more joyous sight than this flock of flamingos. A vast field of pink stretching back to an indigo twilight sky. Lanting shot these birds in Lake Nakuru in Kenya's Great Rift Valley where millions flock to feed and to court. Flamingos largely live off shrimp and blue-green algae. The more they eat, the pinker their legs turn. For this image, Lanting used a slow exposure, which blurred the outlines of the birds, turning them into a post-impressionist painting. A room is, after all, a place where you hide from the wolves. That's all my room is. Jean Rees, White Sargasso C, if you haven't read it. Political reflections, Trump tells Kim, my button's much bigger than yours. And this became a Twitter meme within minutes. It's a running joke in the West Wing that nuclear war could start from the private residence during Fox News prime time, one senior Trump aide told the Daily Beast. And uh, the point is, it's very accurate. Legislators, you need to impeach blabbermouth Don or force him to resign before he kills us all. He is no longer competent to serve as chief executive, if he ever was, Stephen King. Um, and then a very interesting article in The Guardian with Steve Bannon. They're going to crack Don Jr. like an egg on national TV. Was one quote, Donald Trump's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon, has described the Trump Tower meeting between the president's son and a group of Russians during the 2016 election campaign as treasonous and unpatriotic, according to an explosive new book seen by The Guardian. Bannon, speaking to author Michael Wolff, warned that the investigation into alleged collusion with the Kremlin will focus on money laundering and 
predicted they're going to crack Don Jr. like an egg on national TV. Even if you thought this was not treasonous or unpatriotic or bad shit, and I happen to think it's all of that, you should have called the FBI immediately. Bannon went on Wolf writes to say that if any such meeting had to take place, it should have been set up in a Holiday Inn in Manchester, New Hampshire, with your lawyers who meet these people, any information he said could then be dumped down to Breitbart or something like that, or maybe some other more legitimate publication. Bannon added, you never see it, you never know it, because you don't need to, but that's the brain trust that they had. Scorning apparent White House insouciance, Bannon reaches for a hurricane metaphor. They're sitting on a beach trying to stop a Category 5. Donald Trump responded, and this is from the stalwart read it in full, who roasted Steve Bannon. I take you back to the 7th of August 2017 when I said there's a prima facie case here and it's in plain sight, and obviously Bannon thinks the same. And then on the 5th of December 2016, I was talking about how we have a DV8 Tomahawk. Don DeLillo, who is a prophetic 21st century writer, writes as follows in one of his short stories. The specialist is monitoring data on his mission console when a voice breaks in, a voice that carried with it a strange and unspecifiable poignancy. He checks in with his flight dynamics and conceptual paradigm officers at Colorado Command. We have a deviant tom tomahawk. We copy it as a voice. We have gross oscillation here. There's some interference. I've got redundant, but I'm not sure it's helping. We are clearing an outframe to locate source. Thank you, Colorado. It is probably just selective noise. We will correct tomahawk. In the meantime, advise you to stay redundant. The voice, in contrast to Colorado's metallic pigeon, is a melange of repartee, laughter and song, with a quality of purest, sweetest sadness. Somehow, we were picking up signals from radio programs of 40, 50, 60 years ago. Equatorial Guinea confirms there was an attempted coup against President Teodoro Obiang Uema. He's been in power for more than 38 years and is Africa's longest serving leader. And then, of course, we have the famous victory of George Ware. An African in the big leagues in Europe is not a novelty now, but in the late 1980s, when Ware Sr. was playing his way out of the slum, it was rare. International markets, I wrote a piece to start off the year about what to expect. One of the trades I was saying is uh, I was proposing to be long, long Ripple versus short Bitcoin. Ripple has climbed another 26% to a new high. And I said for 2018, the portfolio will look to be short Bitcoin on a tactical basis. Against that Bitcoin short, I will hold a small long in Ripple, which is another cryptocurrency which looks like it might become a serious payments platform. Happy birthday yesterday to Bitcoin, just nine years old and already so big, market cap of $230 billion. I think that's coming down. Another chart of Ripple from Max Normal. I also propose that the portfolio bets about 2.5% uh, of its value on deep out of the money put options on the basket of 10 year bonds. The center of this monetary experiment is held since 2009, um, and therefore I propose a portfolio bets about 2.5% of its value on deep out of the money put options on a basket of 10 year bonds on the basis that the center cannot hold, things will fall apart. It is an insurance policy with a very high payout. 
Um, otherwise, I prefer to look op for opportunities below the big headliners like Alibaba and Facebook. I like Twitter at $24, and I think we can play Naspers through, we can play uh, Tencent through Naspers. U.S. manufacturing surveys, ISM rose to 59.7 in December. Alibaba boss Jack Ma sees $1.2 billion money grant sale blocked by the Trump administration. U.S. government panel had rejected the takeover on national security grounds, making it the latest in a string of deals to collapse since President Trump took office. Currency markets, let's take a look. Euro dollar 120.18, dollar index 92.16, Japanese yen 112.65, Swiss franc 0.9776, the pound, which got about 136, got below 135, <coughs> is now back at 135.17. Australian dollar's been on a bit of a run, 0.7839. Uh, commodity prices supporting that higher. India would be 63.535. South Korean one ten sixty five point four four. The real three twenty three seventy. Egyptian pound seventeen point seven one one five. South African rand is at twelve point three eight four one. And as you know, I'm very bullish about the South African rand. The dollar index. I'll put up a three month chart. My target is in fact eighty eight on this index. Euro dollar. I'm now looking for one twenty four and then one. Commodity markets, the Bloomberg Commodity Index advanced to its highest since February 2017 on Wednesday. The hottest commodity of 2017, of course, is palladium. This metal is used to curb pollution from gasoline fueled engines, climbed to a record in New York. Palladium inventories and warehouses tracked by NYMEX shrank 25%. December, capping a fourth straight annual decline, the longest streak since 2000, and palladium climbed an eye popping 55% in 2017. Palladium futures for March delivery settled 2.5% higher at 1,087.35 cents after touching 1,090.45 cents, the highest for a most active contract in records going back. To 1986. Take a look at gold's January effect. This is from David Inglis. We're last trading around, uh, let me double check for you, 1309.90. It's had a strong run into year end in January. Um, oil, 13th of November last year, I said geopolitical risk is biting back hard. I predict the spot crude oil market reprices further to run and will lift Brent crude over $70 a barrel, not too far away now. And then in my article on, in January this year, I said I turned bullish on oil and I'm forecasting a further run towards $65 a barrel in WTI crude oil. Uh, Ralph Akampora, who's a well-known chartist, expects it to rally to the low to mid-70s. Um, uh, this is a chart, superb run, we're at $62 last time I had a lot of 6208 in point of fact, and another chart from the store wall, 6208. Chocolate may be extinct by 2050, says Condé Nast. When anything bad happens in the world, we can usually count on one thing to make us feel better, chocolate. After all, there's nothing like a good candy bar or pan au chocolat to comfort us in times of trouble. But what happens when the cruel world decides to target chocolate itself? These are the questions we've been faced with since hearing the latest prediction from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Cacao trees, which grow chocolate producing cocoa beans, will likely go extinct as early as 2050 of climate change. Cacao trees are the divas of the tropical plant world, requiring very precise conditions to cultivate and prosper. According to NOAA, cacao can only grow within 20 degrees of the equator, either north or south. In areas with consistent humidity and rainfall, more than half the world's cocoa beans currently come from two countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. 
Um, it's going back to my article in 2018, I said the residual balance of the portfolio will be applied to the frontier markets. One of the reasons I returned home to Kenya was because I believed that someone like myself should be able to create an edge. In the business, a subtle but crucial informational advantage was called the edge. This is Richard Holwell, the former federal judge in New York, telling uh, the New Yorker. He said that in order to evaluate a technology stock, hedge funds sent people to China to sit in front of a factory and see whether it was doing one shift or two. An edge is the goal of every portfolio manager. And I said, I like what I'm seeing in Angola. I'm keen on being long Angolan risk. The devil is in the detail of the execution, however. I will probably look to be long Angola Eurobonds, but now they're looking to deal with the currency as well. African stocks had an alpha year in 2017. I like South African banks, which I believe are steeply undervalued and still carry a Jacob Zuma haircut. So the portfolio will have some standard bank. Here in Kenya, the portfolio will stay long, safari, comma, I believe, geographical expansion. And the e-commerce opportunity have not yet been baked into the price. I'm looking for a total return of in excess of 30%. Kenyan, I'm looking for 35%. Dividend passes have weighed a little. And I'm looking at standard chartered and Barclays Bank of Kenya, both of I expect to return more than 25% in a small slice of higher beta in Chile. Sub-Saharan Africa, there is a real but largely concealed war which is taking place throughout the African continent. It involves the United States and invigorated Russia and the rising China. Do take a look at that article. AP is saying that Ethiopia is to release all its political prisoners and close the notorious prison camp in a surprise move to foster national reconciliation. Will release politicians jailed on charges including involvement in terrorism, its Prime Minister said on Wednesday. Intended to foster national reconciliation follows recent protests over land rights and repression and ethnic clashes and comes amid a political crisis that has seen some senior officials resign from the ruling party. I wrote a piece in 2016 in October and I said then the government need to change tack and effect a course correction and history shows us that this course correction is one of the most difficult things to pull off. But I commend the Prime Minister for pulling it off now. New Zimbabwe government seeks to sell stakes in state-owned companies, invite bids to stakes in up to eight loss-making state-owned enterprises, including its national airline and power utility, to help plug a ballooning budget deficit. They either partly or wholly own 92 companies, which have been making losses for years due to mismanagement. Air Zimbabwe, sitting on a $300 million debt pile, Railway operator National Railways of Zimbabwe received a $400 million recapitulation from South Africa's Transnet. Zessa Holdings has struggled since 2000. It's also selling off its shell in several other companies, including Bankers, ZB Holdings, and Agri Bank, as well as insurer Zimri Holdings, which has operations in several regional centers of the country. So that will be an interesting. Uh, Development. Zambia's Foreign Minister Harry Kalaba has resigned his statement. Corruption is swelling, our youths are wallowing in poverty. Do read his full statement in full. Angola is to abandon its currency peg against the dollar, the central bank head says. Egypt is the precursor. It worked for Egypt, it's going to work for Angola. Plus, you've got the tailwind of a much higher oil price. Um, the central bank has been trying to defend the currency peg using foreign exchange reserves, but the country is running out. South African all shares edged up 0.21% so far this year. President Cyril Ramaphosa will mean an erosion in the Zuma haircut and a substantial reprice in the value of the rand. I wrote that on the 2nd of January. Dollar rand last at 12.3841. I'm looking for 12, then I'm looking for 11, and I'm looking for 10. Uh, that's a big call. Egyptian pound, 17.7115. This is from Paul Wallace. The market capitalization of 
Egypt stocks has risen to $50 billion for the first time since the central bank uh, devalued the pound in November 2016. Nigerian all shares down 0.15% this year. Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is uh, up 0.24% this year. Israel wants African migrants out so badly it's offering $3,500 to each or prison. Martina points out this is notably 23 times ahead more than the UNHCR is offering Somali refugees in Dadaab. Which broken world is this where pedophiles get to shine? Magafuli met pardon child rapists pardoned by him. Kenya Schilling, uh, I'm uh, I think again it'll confound everybody and trade in a you know uh, in, a, in a tight range. I don't see it going beyond one hundred four fifty, but the key risk to the shilling is actually the price of oil. Nairobi All Share is down zero point one three percent this year. The Kenyan regulator ditched a plan to break up Safaricom, as I said he should on the twenty seventh of February twenty seventeen. When I said breaking a peso from Safaricom is simply toxic. Um, Safaricom share price data is uh, on which wrap ups. I believe geographical expansion and the e commerce opportunity will support a total return of not less than 30% this year. It's trading on a trading price earnings ratio of 22.17. NAC20 is down 0.96% year to date. Look at this video I took of the high tide just outside my door. When I was in day, I mean, it's just 30 seconds long. Do, do you have a listen? EABL is building a 300 million shilling new spirits line on high demand. Regional brewers, new line in Nairobi, will have the capacity to produce 22.5 million liters of product annually, enough to meet double digit demand for spirits and cushion firm from a downturn in consumption of mainstream beers. EABL has already announced plans to build a 15 billion shilling uh, Senator Keg factory in Kasumi, underpinning the brewer's investment in the two lines of business that are showing most promise. EABL share price data is on rich wrap ups and trades on a trading P of 24.614. It has always traded a premium, and I think that's just a story about brewing stocks across Africa. Kengen, I'm expecting about a 35% total return. Uh, in 2018, it trades on a trading P of just 6.168. I'm also expecting 25 plus percent plus returns from Standard Chartered and Barclays Kenya. Standard Chartered Kenya trades on a trading P of 8.085, but they've already warned for the full year. Barclays Kenya trades on a trading P of 7. I like that as well. Um, and we're going to hold a small slice of uh, Uchumi for some higher beta returns. Uh, that's an improving story as well. The Auditor General has raised doubts over whether the Kenya Ports Authority can recover three billion shillings it deposited in Chase Bank four months before it was placed under receivership. Be interesting to see who made that placement. Once again, it's great to be back. I wish you a fantastic 2018. I'd be grateful that you stopped by and listened to my music. It's here from Nairobi.